Hey guys, Ranger here, and welcome back to another reaction interview. And this is to the seventh episode of MLP FIM, which is sorry, the eighth episode. I'm sorry, the eighth episode, which is Frenemies. Now, I, d I know that this focuses on uh, Tirak, Cozy Glow, and Glogor. Grogar, <laughs> Glogor. Gl what? Glogor, sorry, Grogar. <laughs> Glogor? Um, I know this focuses on them because I accidentally spoiled myself with that much because on Saturday whenever I was recording the episode, I wasn't watching it like I always do. I was recording it and I happened to out of the corner of my eye because my TV is right over here and so while I was on my laptop out of the corner of my eye, I saw uh, T-Rak and Glogo Grogar uh and then I walked out of the room at one point, out of the office, and came back in. And out again, out of the corner of my eye, I saw, I think, Cozy Glow. Uh, so, and then the thumbnail for this shows, uh, I think, T-Rak. So, I know it focuses on them. I guess that's why it's called Frenemies. That's all that I know. I That's the only thing that I know. So, no, I was not spoiled online at all. I spoiled it for myself because of my TV. But that's all that I know. So let's go ahead and start. And uh, so we might see some villain development. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh huh. Okay. I really enjoyed this episode. It really did. Really done. It really did show some really, really good and really interesting villain development. And there's definitely some interesting things going on here. There's actually more than just one particular thing to mention about the story. Obviously, Grogar wants to take over. Obviously, Grogar wants to... He wants... To... To basically take over. He wants everyone else to help... To work together and help to defeat Twilight and the rest of every pony. Um... The question is, though, I have to ask, Grogar has been in hiding for a long time, and he makes the complaint that the other villains <clears throat> failed in their attempt at fighting Twilight. Personally, I think this guy has no room to talk, because he hasn't even attempted to defeat Twilight yet, and yet he's complaining about their defeat? You got, He got defeated, too. He got his bell taken from him. So, yeah, he really doesn't have any room to talk. It sounds kind of hypocritical to me. But, and it also kind of irked me, the fact that he told them, you retrieve my bell. I'm just going to stay here. It's got like a typical villain, cliche, you know, cliche, where the villain sends their lackeys to do the dirty work while they just sit back on their throne. He could have tagged along with them to get his bell back. But instead, he sent them on the quest. Now, you could de definitely argue that he did it to try to make them work together by forcing them to do a task. But, yeah, you could argue about that. However, I really don't think Grogar has any intentions of fully working with them. Whenever it comes to villains, there is a typical setup, a typical scenario that you will notice with villains, is whenever you have two or more villains, they don't usually work together. At some point, they may end up turning on each other because that, that power corrupts them. With power comes corruption. And so they turn against each other. It happened, basically, with... I mean, it happened with Tempest and uh, the Storm King. The Storm King promised Tempest to restore her horn, but he had no intentions. He used her. The same thing with with T-Rex and Discord. T-Rex used Discord, and so I really don't think that Grogar has any intentions of working with these villains. He's clearly said he's more powerful than them, and he could pretty much obliterate them anytime that he wanted. And he's he's already power more powerful than them. If the, he were to get his hooves on the bell. He, Lord only knows how much more powerful that he could actually become. It could be devastatingly powerful. And even these villains here would be un unable to stop him. But 
the interesting thing, and I have to mention this first, is Chrysalis made the remark that Grogar is powerful and that they were basically going to revolt against him. She said that he's too powerful, as is. He's has more power within him than than these three. That's a freak amount of that's a freak ton of power. And that's without the belt. If he were to get his hooves on that bell, even these villains would be unable to stop him. Now, these villains, now Chrysalis, now like I said, the, it's already been shown in one of the other episodes, that in, the, in I think the first episode or the second episode that introduced Grogar, the other villains su had some sort of fear against him. He was more powerful and more dangerous and more deadly. And so, even though these villains, they were they were afraid of that power. And here, I think all three of them know that Grogar has to... Chrysalis said it. He has too much power. And so, she and the rest of the villains have decided that they are going to basically revolt against him. They are going to, ex they are going to enact a revolution, a rebellion against him. And right now, they're going to work with him, but they're hatching their own plan to backstab him later on. This could end badly. If this was any other show but MLP, I would say they're going to reveal later on that they stabbed him in the back and then he's going to just kind of like snap his hoof and then suddenly, boom, they're all going to be dead. That would kind of be funny, actually. That would be funny. But it's not going to happen. Now, they decide... Now, <laughs> Grogar has a plan to use the bell to become more powerful and take over. However, we don't know if that is just the extent of Grogar's plan. We don't know the full extent of his ideas, of his intentions. It is very likely that he has intentions of fully taking over and even and making these villains his underlings. And they will not be villains anymore, but his lackeys. That could very much happen because typically villains don't want to work with anyone else. They don't want to have anyone else to have any bit of power. They want all the power to be, uh, to be for them. And <clears throat> we don't know what Grogar is planning, but we know what Cozy, Chrysalis, and T-Rex kind of have in store. They agreed to work together until the right moment. They've decided to feign working together and getting along to continue to put on uh, to continue to put on a ruse to pos they hope to lure Grogar into a false sense that they're actually working together and possibly developing some sort of bond in actuality they have actually formed a bond but they kind of have thoughts that they're going to work together until they can you know defeat each other again i can totally understand why this episode is called Frenemies, because they're enemies against each other, but they kind of formed a bit of an enemy friendship. And it's it's very comical, because this isn't the first time that I've seen this gimmick with two people that did not like each other kind of get along. But it's hilarious to see here with MLP. It really honestly is. And I can honestly relate to this in some way. Not because I want to take over the world, and I have there's another guy... That I, and there's someone else that I know that also wants to take over the world, but we both dislike each other. No, it's not that scenario, but there is a scenario where there is a guy that I work with, and I would honestly say that we are frenemies. I'm not the fondest of him at all, and I'm pretty sure he's not the fondest of me. We'll say things he likes uh, kind of pest he likes pestering me. I'm the only one on the entire shift that he more does that to. He has more fun... Uh, pestering me and trying to rub me the wrong way and so I just kind of do it right back to him and we can sometimes if we're talking about vehicles you know we can kind of get along on that but otherwise you know we just kind of I look at us as more like frenemies you know I don't see us going on a trip together and fully get along getting along you know I see us acting pretty much like this you know hating each other I really don't see us developing a really solid friendship. So I can relate to that. Like this guy that I work with, we're frenemies. And here, Chrysalis, t -Rack and Cozy decide that they're going to work together and possibly try to stab t in the back later on. However, 
there's already a plot hole in their plan. There's already a major flaw that they don't realize. First off, Chrysalis said herself that he's too powerful. They are planning on stabbing the guy in the back that they just said was too powerful. That's a very bad idea. Apparently, they have no respect for their lives, and they're like, I'm just going to stab this guy in the back. And then he just completely turns around, I know what you did last summer. Or, I, I know what you were planning. And then, and then, poof! Molecules everywhere. Um, so, every one of them wants revenge. Every one of them wants revenge. But it's interesting that every one of them decided to work together for the time being until they can actually uh, stab Grogar in the back. And they're planning on stabbing, they're planning on tricking him. Now, the question, Grogar does not seem to be stupid. So I'm wondering if he actually is buying this, if he legit believes this, or if he knows that they got the bell, and he knows that they're actually keeping a secret from him, and that they're planning on, on revolting against him. This is my theory. They is I, th I I theorize that he does know this because he's a bad guy. I'm pretty sure he's not. I'm pretty sure he's used to deception. He's probably the master of it. Okay, cozy is probably the master of deception and cunning and conniving and backstabbing. But I'm pretty sure that you know that he's not. I'm pretty sure that Grogar is not foreign to to that concept. So I actually think. I theorize, and I, I could be proven wrong, but this is a theory that I hold right now, and until I'm proven wrong, this is kind of what I'm going to speculate, is that these three, they're naive. They think that they're cunning enough to keep a secret from Grogar, but I have a feeling that he already knows. He knows, and they're not going to be able to pull the wool over his eyes. He knows, and he's probably going to try to manipulate them and put them into their little places so that he can reveal his plan and, you know, pretty much get them later. But Cozy, Tirak, and Chrysalis have agreed to work together for the time being. Now, I now we have no idea what their plan is. All we know is they want revenge. And there's already a few problems that I can see with this. Not in terms of, of the writing, no. It's in the characters' mentalities. There are ideals. First off, every single one of them want to take over. They want to exact revenge on on everyone. It, uh, Cozy wants to get revenge on Twilight. T-Rex wants to get revenge on Twilight. Chrysalis wants to get revenge on Twilight and on Starlight. And so they want to destroy every one of them. And they're not, even if they were to succeed, they are not going to continue to work together and rule together. That's not going to happen. They would turn on each other then and try to fight one another. Now, here's the issue with this. Chrysalis and t are the only two that can use magic. And you know that they would use magic. They're not just going to use brute strength. They're not going to have like a... They're not going to arm wrestle each other. Cozy, she don't have any magic. But she's manipulative and cunning. And she uses her, ador she uses her adorableness... And the fact that she's just a little kid, she uses that to her advantage. But she is manipulative, highly manipulative, and she's cunning, and she is very intelligent. And that is her strong point. Chrysalis and T-Rex, they're not stupid. They are intelligent as well. But in a typical villain fashion, there is a possibility that they are letting their lust for revenge cloud their judgment and it's going to be the the ultimate it may not be the death of them but it will be their downfall as they will allow that to cloud their judgment and they won't be able to make a good a very a very wise decision they're going to be oblivious to other other red flags in their plan because they're just solely like pretty much tunnel vision focused straight ahead on their goal which is revenge and they're not going to see the other plot holes in their plan. That's also a problem. 
Now, additionally, Cozy, like I said, she has no magic. So whenever it comes down to it, Chrysalis can absorb the love from someone. T-Rex has no love for anyone, so she can't absorb that from him. T-Rex can also take magic from living creatures. So theoretically, if you were to look at each each's ability, T-Rex probably has the biggest advantage here. Because he could easily absorb and take Chrysalis' power. Unless he can only do it if she gives it to him. In which case, then they'll just blast each other with laser beams until one is no longer standing. Cozy would be obliterated because she has no magic ability whatsoever. Unless she could use some sort of plan to try to, you know, try to trick one of them into defeating themselves. I don't know. But like I said, there's some things going on here, and it's hard to decipher what the outcome is going to be. Now, Grogar has a plan to try to take over using all of his magic. And like I said, this is villains. They're not going to all completely... Uh, 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 he's not going to fully work with them. Now, the so the interesting thing, they agreed to keep the bell hidden. They've put on this convincing charade to convince him, Grogar, that they don't have the bell. In actuality, they have the bell. But, like I said, I theorize that he knows that the bell is there... I'm pretty sure he believes that they got the bell. This is just one friendship-based exercise that he sent them on. I'm curious. Now, I'm curious if he will try to do anything else throughout the rest of the season to try to help them. Now, another question is exactly what could they do? What could they do? What could these three villains do to try to exact vengeance upon... There's also another kind of problem is... How could they exact vengeance upon Twilight and Starlight? How can they get revenge and enact and enact their own plan without Grogar finding out about it? Grogar probably won't listen to anything that they say because he has his own plan, and unless any ideas that they come up with would fall would fall in line with his ideas, he's not going to listen. And so. If they try to enact any bit of their plan, Grogar is going to see that they're acting on their own and they're not listening to him. And it's probably just going to put them back at square one, in which he thinks that they're not working together, they're, they're too impatient, they're, they're jumping ahead, they're not planning, or, you know, and so they're too eager. And he's it's just going to put them to Grogar, in his eyes, back at square one. Plus, if they reveal anything, it's going to give Grogar the idea that they've been manipulating and that they've been, you know, uh, that they've been planning and working together behind his back. And he's not going to like that. In which case, he'll blast them into oblivion. So, and they could easily, they could easily work together for a certain period of time. But again, how long could they do that? Even up until the last minute, Grogar decides to enact his plan. What can they do? They can't fight him. Chrysalis said herself he's too powerful. The only two, the only out of these three, the only two that can use magic are T-Rex and Chrysalis. And even then, those two are not powerful enough, just the two of them, to take on Grogar alone. He's more powerful than the both of them combined, and so he would easily he would easily annihilate them. Cozy has no magic. So they can't fight him. So how exactly could they even defeat him? How do they think that the end result what do they think is gonna happen? Because Grogar is not going to stay in the dark the whole time. I, I don't imagine he's going to stay in the dark the whole time about them, you know, uh, planning behind his back. I imagine that he's going to find out what do they think is going to happen. I don't know what's going I don't know. There's a lot of things here. I It's kind of going to be curious as to what's going to happen with these villains. Because it's, it's not just villains working together now. There's a whole new story here. It's not just villains all working together for one cause. No, now you have villain against villain against villain. And it's evident because we don't know for certain whether T-Rat, Cozy, and Chrysalis will actually still continue to work together. Now, there is a theory. There is a theory that I may, that I have, and this is just purely theoretical, but this is a theory. There have been times in other media where a villain would, you know, where you would be introduced to one regular villain. 
But then an even bigger, more deadlier villain would come along. And that villain, the first villain, would have to work together with the heroes to defeat that to defeat that new villain. This happened, I remember this, this happened before, this has happened a, a few different times, or several different times, in the Sonic the Hedgehog series. I remember, for example, in Sonic X. Uh, traditionally, it was Eggman that was the villain. But then, suddenly, the Metarex come out of nowhere. And even Eggman is threatened by these, by the Metarex. And so even Eggman has to team up with Sonic and friends to help defeat them. This isn't the first time Eggman has had to team up with them before, I'm, I know, and defeat other newer villains. And so this is pretty much here. This is a theory that I have is that another another thing that could happen is Cozy, Tirak, and Chrysalis team up with the very people that they vow vengeance on. They team up with Starlight and Twilight to defeat Grogar. Because even he poses a threat to them. That's a theory. That's a theory. And it's just a... Uh, I, like, I really don't know what the end result's going to be. There's lots of different possibilities for how this could end. But there's another side story. That there's another thing that we see with these three. Traditionally, we see that Cozy, T-Rex, and Logor, sorry, Cozy, T-Rex, and Chrysalis, they hate each other. They hate each other's guts. They don't have anything for each other. But Grogar sends them on a, I can't believe I'm going to say it, on a friendship venture for the three of them to try to work together and learn to work together and get along. And we do see a mutual understanding between all three of them. Is that all three of them want revenge on all the other ponies. They want revenge. They all want revenge and they want to obliterate all the other ponies. Now, this is a common thing that they have. That is, This is a common thing that they have here. And that's what I said. The gimmick with these three is it was hilarious. Is It was like one big, or one hilarious, dysfunctional evil family. It was, it was like one dysfunctional evil family. And this is honestly hilarious. And the evil dysfunctional family even get their own music number. That's hilarious. The interesting thing is whenever all three of them are by the fire, and we begin to see more of the development between them. We see more of an understanding between them as they reminisce about the times that they attempted to take over Equestria, but they failed. And we begin to see some things where they even begin to kind of let their hair down and let loose with t actually like mimicking uh, Twilight, which actually causes Chrysalis and Cozy to burst into laughter. And then even Chrysalis makes makes remarks about whenever she became uh, Cadence. And Chrysalis even goes as far as turning into Twilight and making Tirak and Cozy laugh their butts off. And interestingly enough, we see a thing here where all three of them are actually having fun. They're actually having fun. This is like a dysfunctional family camping trip. And all three are just having fun. And whenever they agree to work together, they do see that things become easier. Whenever we see them working together and kind of helping each other up the mountain, we do see that things, we do see that there's actually a bond forming between them, which is very interesting to actually witness that. But then it, it is revealed that if t rex absorbs Chrysalis magic, that he can Oh, that he can open or create a hole in that barrier. And at first, Chrysalis, naturally, she's very defensive about it. She's like, no way. But then she agrees to give him the magic, which completely drains her. And at this point, she doesn't think that he's going to give it back. And we see a large amount of development here where he mutually, where he actually gives it back to her. And she reveals that she honestly didn't think that he was going to give it back. And I think there's an interesting thing here with Chrysalis is because she's actually shocked that he actually gave it back. 
And T-Rex is actually shocked that he gave it back too. And there's a moment here where the three of them realize that they were working together. And this is interesting because the friendship was actually beginning. There was a spark of friendship that was beginning to ignite between them because they were working together and they realized that helping each other and working together, it felt good. It made something arise within them that they did not know about that was foreign to them, but it felt good. That was friendship. And at first they didn't realize it, but then they understood what it was. And Chrysalis was like, freak, no way am I putting up with this. Then she reveals that, then she says that friendship is toxic. You know, it's it's like a disease that infects everyone around it, around you. And so she decided that she was not going to let friendship infect her like it did others. To which Cozy and Chris and uh, Cozy and T-Rex are like, Obviously, it won't happen. However, there's one thing that I have to notice, which is Cozy's expression during this segment. Whenever she says, same, agreeing to Chrysalis, she actually has a more of a concerned or sad expression on her face. She's not, ex here, she's not the same manipulative little, she's not the same manipulative little bitch that she was before, but here, it, it looks like she actually has possibly second thoughts. That just maybe she thought that there might be some friendship between them. However, I really, however, while it's, well, I could easily theorize that, that just maybe Cozy was having second thoughts about the friendship between them and that maybe it might have been a good thing. Her later mention about, ooh, I love a good backstabbing in the morning. Yeah, uh, yeah, she's still evil. She's still 100% evil. And so they all put on a convincing ruse to Grogar, making him think that they work together. But they were actually working together, and friendship was actually sparking between them. So there was that interesting bit of development there, where I think that they, all three of them, did get a glimpse of real friendship and the power that it has. And they don't. I think that there's a part of them that might. Right now, they're still kind of hung up on their old villainous ways. And so they're not willing to make that change yet. But I still think that since that spark has ignited, there's a possibility that it could grow. It's just a theory, but that's just my personal thoughts. And since they started to work together and they actually saw that it made them all feel good because they worked together and they were actually kind of laughing and kind of actually having fun, there's a possibility that later on, whenever faced with a situation like that, they may actually choose to work together and stand against Grogar and actually work together that maybe they might actually have formed a friendship. Now, and I think it would be interesting if they actually formed a friendship between the three of them and they decided, you know, that they were going to stay friends. I think that would that would be very cool. However, I see one problem with this particular particular thing, personally. And the fact is, if that's the route that they're going to take with this, then the only way that they could possibly do any more... The only way for this to really work out great is for them to actually dedicate a few more episodes like this to showing the three of these, to the, these three working together and actually showing further development with that. Because if this is the only time that we see the villains and see that spark ignite between them, and then just later on we see them working together and them team up against Grogar and they just work together because friendship. Honestly, it would not work, at least not to me, because it, there would not have been enough development. I would not personally be satisfied with seeing, with just seeing that bit of, with that little spark, and then suddenly, with no further development whatsoever, it just thrown on you that you're just supposed to accept it, that suddenly they believe in friendship. I think that if this is a route that they're going to take, that we should at least get a few more episodes, that we should get uh, two or three more episodes to show them working together, show what they're planning, and show moments that further the development between them and show that spark growing so that whenever, if there is a moment whenever they 
decide to stay friends, team up, and work against Grogar, that it would be more believable whenever, because we have seen that development between them, it would only work better if that's the path that they were going to take. But whether that will happen or not, I'm not really sure. But, like I said, I will go ahead and throw this out there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw this out there. And I know some people might not agree with me on this, but I've said before, and I'm going to say it again, if Lightning Dust, I personally don't feel that Chrysalis, T-Rack, or Cozy should be redeemed. I think it'd be interesting for them to have a friendship between them, but honestly, I don't want them to become good. I don't think that they deserve it. I don't think that they should become good. And the reason I say that is because I go back to Lightning Dust. If Lightning Dust is supposed to be happy with being an antagonist, if she's supposed to just stay an antagonist and not, you know, not get redeemed whatsoever, is she supposed to stay an antagonist and not get a second chance? Then why would these three deserve another chance. These three have done worse than what Lightning Dust has. There are, like I said, there are other people, in, there are other characters in the show that have done worse than Lightning Dust did, and that, and they still got, and they still got, they still, they still got redeemed. Here, all three of these characters buried a guy in snow, and buried his entire home in snow and left him there for dead because they didn't care and they left him there to dig out his own home by himself and they want to destroy their their enemies they want to destroy the their enemies and take over equestria t-rack absorbed all the magic in equestria cozy wanted to uh, wanted to eliminate it completely and chrysalis managed to take over all of all of canterlot that's not, that's, I think that's worse than what Lightning Dust did. And so, like I said, my personal belief, if Lightning Dust can't get redemption, I don't think that Chrysalis, T-Rex, or Cozy should either. If Lightning Dust is going to stay an antagonist, then I think Chrysalis, T-Rex, and Cozy should too. Personally, I think that Chrysalis should be destroyed. I think that it would only be fair that T-Rex be completely destroyed and... Uh, you know, be completely obliterated, Cozy to be locked away again in Tartarus for good, and Chrysalis to be possibly destroyed as well, because she's the last, last, I think that it would only be fair if Thorax was the one to deliver the final, or, you know, if Thorax possibly was the one uh, to deliver the final blow and fully defeat or kill Chrysalis, because, like I said, if some characters, like Lightning Dust, and heck, even um, Flim and Flam are supposed to be antagonists for good. Then why can't these three stay antagonists for good? It would only be fair. I don't think that it's fair to have someone want to take over the world and not care about uh, killing or eliminating any anyone else, and actually uh, succeeded a couple of times. But then you have somebody else. Who just jeopardize the lives of some people because of their own recklessness. I think the former is worse. But like I said, that's just my personal thought. I don't think that these three should get redemption. Uh, I think it, it would be unfair, honestly, to see that. But, again, there were some things that I wanted to make mention about in this particular episode. Like I said, the gimmick between these three, honestly, like I said, it seemed like a big dysfunctional family. Like, t is the father, Cozy is the daughter, and Chrysalis is the mother. I'm sure that I'm not the only one that thought that. I'm certain I'm not the only one that thought that. This is like two people come together and suddenly decided, and there, then you have the orphan child that is evil, and you have two other people that are evil, and they just decide to, you know, these two people get married, and then they adopt Cozy, and then it's just one big evil dysfunctional family. Uh, like, I can totally see that. But, like I said, that moment whenever Chrysalis made the mention about if T-Rex would stop trying to drain my essence, yeah, that's an, it, yeah, it wasn't directed like that, but, you know, the way my mind works, and some uh, other people's mind, yeah, you, you can easily imagine an innuendo with that. And like I said, it was hilarious that the idea of cupcakes brought everybody there. 
Like, it doesn't matter if you don't agree with somebody. If you bring cupcakes, everybody will be there. But it was honestly hilarious to see all three of these. To see all three of these together. And see them. It was honestly hilarious to see all three of these working together. Even singing together. Like, all three of them giving a villain song. It was honestly hilarious. Seeing just all three of them together. <laughs> This is hilarious. I honestly love this setup. It was just so bizarre and just outright zany. I loved it. It really was great. But like I said, the mention of Mount Everhoof was interesting. And like I said, Mount Everhoof. Uh, this is shown on the My Little Pony uh, phone game. Uh, whenever you go to the map of Equestria, it shows Mount Everhoof. I don't recall this ever being featured in the show before. So I, it's great that we got that we finally get to see Mount Everhoof in this. I love it. It's honestly great to be able to finally see it. And I love the art style. I love the lo layout of the land around it. It's very beautifully detailed. And like I said, this little cabin right here, just kind of off here on the corner, this may this brought back so many memories of the small little places like the couple of little shacks like this you would see in Skyrim in the snowy mountainous area um, like mostly around the center mountain uh, the throat of the world uh, you know like the tallest mountain in Skyrim this honestly made me think about that like that one woman that would teach you more effectiveness with using a bow and arrow I forgot her name or the and the location but this made me think about that. That's why I said, said whenever I saw this scene, huh, and here I thought I discovered all the locations in, in Skyrim. Haven't discovered this one yet. This looks like a, a, a scene like that. And I love it. Yeah, I really, honestly love it. But we did see a bit more of a glimpse to Cozy. And how that she tries to use her cuteness and her tininess and her cunning, manipulative ways to try to talk others into doing what she wants. But whenever they don't do that, that's whenever she snaps. And we see that she has a major, fiery temper. I mean, she goes full tilt bitch on this guy whenever he reveals that he's not going to do it. She goes full, like, she fully rages, even to the point of having the vein bulging out of her head. She goes full, like, honestly, I'm not certain if they intended for her to be that way, but this character reminds me so much of Darla Dimple from Cats Don't Dance. How she would often time, so many times try to look cute, but whenever she was angry, bar the door because she would rage at you. And when these three walked up to the cabin, that's whenever, I didn't realize it at first in the first shots, but there was an axe here on this tree, on this tree stump. That's whenever I said, oh, no, 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 no. You don't let three power hungry people, two of them, one of them who is kind, who is kind of insane, the other one who is more insane than the other. You do not, who is a psychopath, you don't let those three people near your home and leave a completely out in the blue axe on a tree stump outside. If this was a mature rated show, that guy would have come to the door and he would have got the axe right down the forehead. Or he, they would have said, excuse me, could you give us directions to so and so? And then the guy would have turned and said, yeah, uh, it's over. <clears throat> and then he would look down to see half the blade coming out the other side of his chest. And you probably seen T-Rack in like with it in the guy's back and said and I can imagine that. Cozy saying, let me ask you a question. And then <laughs> T-Rack just pulls it out of his back. Yeah, I'm grim, okay? I have a grim sense of humor, so what? Actually I would love to see a comic of that if if people still jumped at the chance to do comics. Like I would love to see a comic of that of like Cozy, like, or like, Cozy, like, the guy turns around and says, oh, yeah, it's right over, and then Cozy said, let me ask you a question. And she, like, and Cozy is, like, Chucky from Child's Play, and she just, like, axes him in the back. Yeah, I can, I, actually, I'm surprised nobody's done that yet. Like, Cozy is kind of like Chucky from Child's Play, you know? Actually, you could kind of think that. Like, these three, like, Cozy is kind of like Chucky from Child's Play. Chrysalis is, like, the ring girl. Or the girl from Grudge, whichever one came out of the TV. And T Rex is kind of like Freddy Krueger, you know. <laughs> like imagine, just just also, just imagine that. That's just the dynamic here. 
But I got to say, I did also really enjoy the song between the three of them. It was hilarious. It was fun. It was zany. But uh, yeah, that, are, that is my thoughts regarding this episode. Uh, it was very interesting. I'm, I'm I'm glad that we finally got to see the villains again, and I'm glad that we got to see some development between them. Um, and I'm very much wondering what the outcome is going to be, what's going to happen later on with them, and I'm very curious about that. But uh, this was a really fun episode, I have to say. Very zany, and like I said, a lot of fun setups. Um, a lot of great potential, for, for especially for fan fiction, you know. But... Uh, Again, uh, thanks again to everybody that worked on this episode. Thanks so much for giving us a really good villain episode. So thank you all so much. Um, th thank you all so much, and uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys again for joining me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video that I do. Take care.